Hello everybody, I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And welcome to Studio R12 Live um, Q&A. We're gonna show you some really neat things. We're gonna hear your questions. We're gonna show you some information that will be interesting. I think that our Stencil fans are really gonna like today's. I think like, they will too. Um, we're, we're pretty excited about this one. We know that crafting, stenciling, painting, DIY, all of that, um, a lot of times we do it because we want to save money, but we all have seen those memes that are like, why would I buy it for $19.99 when I could go spend $750 and make it myself? Yeah. So ha, ha, ha. we're gonna show you some ways to not do that today. Yeah, so what we wanna do today is show you how um, money doesn't have to be an issue and money saving um, tricks, mm -hmm. tips, um, just some things to keep in your head. If you're like, mm, I don't wanna spend that money today, do I have that, can I make, can yeah. I make do with it? Some stuff like that. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's going to be so too. much fun. And um, welcome if you're new here. Um, we do this every week on Tuesday, and then we release videos on Saturday. And we're happy, happy, happy that you're here. Yes, absolutely. And let's talk a couple things. Um, first, on YouTube. So one way to save money is to always watch us on YouTube because we're always giving out free things. Yes, like, so we good. have hundreds of videos we have people message us all the time and say i can't believe you are giving out all this content for free mm -hmm. um last week on our youtube so let's talk about last weekend we have an amazing project we're working on um we're working on um i'll tell them a smidge um fire fire, fire. We're working on another fire project and it's a big one huh. so However, we ran into, you know how we get started on things and then we realize- But that realize, never happens to you guys. We realize <laughs> we have to research a little bit more than what we anticipated. So we have to push that project back. So over the weekend, we released a quick video showing you how to foil mm -hmm. on um, it, pretty much anything, Any embellishments. Shape. We're yeah. showing you how to do it with our brand new corners, mm -hmm. which I'll share the link for, but you can you can uh, foil on anything and to foil on an embellishment and put it on top of your project is just it's magic amazing um knowing the tricks on how to get the foil off the edges and stuff like that how to be careful um it's worthy to watch just so that you understand how to do that even if you're not interested in corners yeah um and let's see what else this weekend on youtube we have been wanting to do this project I think for over a year now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, been a, a big deal. Um, quilting, quilting on everything, painting quilts on everything. Um, plus quilting in general has just come roaring back into the, the popular. Mm -hmm. And so we've been knowing about it and working on it and then, but it takes like quilt, there's a million quilt squares. And so we had to isolate out which ones we wanted to do and how do we use it. And, what sizes and yeah and there's a, and there's a lot and and that's lot. kind, of, so one of, sorry, it's kind sorry. of one of those things that a little backdrop into like we, what goes um, on right here we love being able to offer so many sizes of things mm -hmm. but then when we have to paint it's like 
Well, what size do I choose? Mm. <laughs> so do I? Do I have? I think it all of it's here. over there. I think I've got the book. Yeah. I haven't put everything in here yet, but this is what happens when we want to offer all the sizes. So all the yellow are the titles, and then there's like seven sizes, yeah. and then there's a super couple big ones and that smaller are, ones and some smaller ones that are coaster size. Yeah. Yeah, so, so many sizes. And but then when we had them all in this book, which is, this is the disc binder system. Mm -hmm. So easy to find what you need because you can just open the book and find your pattern. It is amazing. So these are such a great way to store your stencils. And you get the punch. Yeah, let me um, show those. Get the punch and the punch punches this little pattern in it. And then you can put any size ring that you want in there and then what I like to do I've been on your side of things um, for a very long time I like the best ways to organize stencils is this hanging curtain rod that's wired down here and that is an amazing way to do it um, however you don't always have a whole lot of space to hang things um, this is amazing you can't it's a book but you can't put it book wise but you can easily Stack them up. So because you can color code them, now you know that your green is going to be your everyday and your your purple or aubergine is going to be your quilts. And um, then you can make patterns, red and white for Christmas, things like that. They come in all the colors and sizes under the rainbow. Then you can have a stack of them and then you just pull out the stack that you want to access and then go shopping through your stencils because stencils are reusable and the number one money saving thing is if you are going to paint again with it then you should own a stencil if you're going to do it once and it's just some one-off something that's super easy then maybe vinyl's the answer but yeah. stencils are so reusable and i'm going to tell you a little bit about that in just a minute and then um so this weekend we're gonna we're gonna paint on on some things so this is going to be a stencil project mm -hmm. it's going to be a quilt project mm -hmm. it's going to be a dollar tree it's project dollar tree. We, these are dollar tree frames yep we canvas, are not canvas they're frames. canvases they We're, even have the hardware attached on mm -hmm. the back of them already so um that makes it super easy and they're also not white canvases yeah they, they were already oh, patterned canvases yeah, they were um this kind of color canvases they were all the things so i tell you how to prime the canvases and what's neat about this, I, I can't really do this. Steve, can you get down here? And if you hang these in a square or in a row, they make it super farmhouse looking. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really neat, like just do a simple one palette color instead of doing something busy. Um, so they're a neat way to do just a subtle something. And then my grandmother had all the stories behind all the different patterns of the quilt squares. So if you have a room that just has that family feel, family room, um, that can be just a really neat way to give a, an anchor. Yeah. You know, do a big barn quilt for your barn or your garage. Yes. Well, and those are really popular here. Here in Ohio, there was actually a project that was done 20, 20 plus years ago where every county has a barn quilt painted on a barn somewhere, and it's very large. And so that's something super that every fun. time we travel, we're like, oh, there's the county barn quilt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's super fun. So let's I did talk. Not know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I actually that's cool. um, won, a, won a pageant by knowing that. Ah. Because I actually <laughs> am friends with a family member of the person who painted them. So I just happened to, happen to be right to place, right time, and know that. Yeah, that's so good. Um, let's talk another way about saving money. We're going to save money today painting. Yes. That's but our goal is to You're share. also going to sign up for the newsletter to save money. That's the Six best days way. Yeah. a week we are sending out newsletters offering sales, promotions, over the long information yeah. over the long weekend. We um, did a brush sale and we did a brush sale, friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like this, um, if you don't want to take notes today, um, you don't have to worry about taking notes. Um, Carrie has written a blog post mm -hmm. and it's on our website and then she will share that when she's posting and things like that about what we're going to do she will share the blog post as well so you'll get keyed into the information we're posting um so um, we had a really if you guys have been hearing all the ai um drama and new things going around so we 
tried it out and we looked up why are dome brushes good for painting and Studio R12 happened to be the source for a lot of their information. I was pretty proud of that. Yeah, it was pretty cool yeah, to see that. But we up. write a lot, we give a lot of content away mm -hmm. and we want you guys to know stuff, so. Yep, and then um, Patty asked if I was in a beauty pageant. I was in beauty pageants when I was tiny, but this was actually a pageant our um, 4th of July festival every year has a pageant and I was in that and got to represent my city for a year and travel around and talk about how cool our river community is and our downtown and yeah. get people to come visit. Carrie's pretty, uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad in a, in a good really way. good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, today's sale. So today is May 30th, 2023. Mm -hmm. You can save $25 on your order when you spend $50 or more, and the code is MAY25. So I will share that in the comments, but it's um, sale ends tonight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And we've also had a lot of people taking advantage of that. Because yeah, you can stop the whole site. Yeah. You can get whatever you want. You guys, you name your sale in this way. You know, so you can be like, oh, I've been waiting for a sale on this. Yeah. And so you can totally just go make your sale what you want the sale on. Yeah. And buy all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a la carte in a way. Yes. Love it. All right. Shall all right. we get started? We shall get started. Okay. So the very first thing I want to talk about is how you save money. Um, so thank you. Um, if you have painted, so this is our um, cookbook stand, and this also makes it a phenomenal tablet stand. I watch YouTube videos while I'm cooking and chopping onions and dicing and stirring and making bone broth or whatever I'm doing in the kitchen that's kind of time consuming but mindless. Um, I use my tablet stand there so that um, I can just hands free do the thing and it stands it up and it gets it out of like not flat stand on my, my counter. So um, what's cool about this is we make these little panels and I can get it out of there. They are, if you get them tight like that, just sand where you've added paint. So on the back of this, this is blank. So I can paint a whole nother thing on the back of this and that makes it another surface. So this doubles my value for my surface if I paint on the back side of things. That's a really good, it's almost like picking up invisible money. Like it's sitting there, you just didn't know it was sitting there. So um, today we are going to work on the back side of this project and then you can even paint on this blank. And one of the other ways that I like for saving money is to always pick up stencils that you can use over and over again. If you're in the Rawlinson family, um, Studio R12, the R in Studio R12 is Romans 12 in the Bible, but also it's Rawlinson. And so it just made it kind of like a clicky click thing when I was naming the company and stuff. But what's cool is we have 12 Rawlinsons just in our immediate family, just the, the kids and the grandkids, okay? We don't even get into cousins and all of that stuff. So if I get an R, this is not an R, but um, if I get an R, then I'm gonna be able to use it on all of the gifts that I'm gonna give everybody because we'll all have R as our last name. It's yeah. so much fun that way. And um, I love that. So we're gonna paint with an R. And then another way to save money is do something like get, make sure you get the state that you live in. If you live, my daughter-in-law, Lena, um, we helped her move this weekend. They're moving into a new house. And when I helped her move, like it was like an army of Hamiltons, you know, showed up and they were all there to help Lena and Chris move into the new house. And so here's this army of people, but they all are from Ohio. They all call Ohio home. So with a stencil that is universal to your people, then that can be um, something else that you can use this stencil literally a hundred times, um, a thousand times, as long as you don't bend it. And as long as you clean it every fifth to 10 times. And if you want to see a video about that, then how to yes. clean your stencils is available on our YouTube channel. Um, and like I said earlier, um, Carrie is um, putting a blog post on the website. So if you don't want to take notes for this, um, it'll all be there. So we're going to move from our monogram into how to prepare our surface. One of the really cool, if you don't like us on Facebook, you should do that because Carrie is very creative and she posts the coolest content. 
um, on our Facebook page, but she took a picture last week of our new stains. So I'm putting gloves on because I just, my hands will get all brown and, and funny. But um, so the Minwax stains um, are incredible. So if you saw the 4th of July, um, the, well, I guess it's not 4th of July, it's the patriotic um, round for a door hanger. Um, it has um, the United States, did we put the United States on? I don't know that I did. Uh, on the, the, the shape flag? of the United States? No, we just did the flag and it says home sweet home. Okay, yeah. So I, I thought we planned on it and then we chose not to do it. But anyway, these are so transparent. You can see the um, Shoshugiban, which is the Japanese um, wood burning, which is the project I'm working on this week for next week. Um, anyway, you can see that through the stain. Okay, so, but I want to show you this while I'm getting ready to do the money saving backside of this. And you use your opener, and I shook this up beforehand. What's interesting to me is the color of this is extremely green. Can you see that in the overhead okay? Nick? Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see how it's very, it's a beautiful green, but it's extremely green. But when I use the stir stick, by gum and by golly, this is the color that that is. And that doesn't look anything like that. I was shocked when I opened up my new cans. I got this many. Um, over two or three weekends ago. Um, be aware if you're looking for, this is the Minwax water-based finish and they have a fold out of like this many colors. I'm in love with this product. Mm -hmm. I'm in love in love, like I just want them all. Um, but I had to choose, I chose eight. Um, they did not have eight cans of the base in any of the stores in the town we, were, we went camping um, because that's, you gotta go out of town, right? Um, but we went camping, and in the stores we were near, they didn't have any of the base in the stores. So they had five cans, so I got these colors. But all of them, except for the light one, looked like a green, green, green color. Um, and it was shocking. I was really concerned I got something wrong. So we're going to show you how to use this. And I'm going to dip out of the can. You could pour into it. Um, will you grab one of the honey bottles? So we will be transporting our um, Minwax stains into the honey bottles, just like our paints. And then we label the lid and then we put this away so this rim doesn't get gunky and yucky and all of that kind of stuff. And then you can easily shake them up. They're manageable, they have a pour spout, all of that stuff. Thank you. Welcome. Um, so I would normally spit it out into a paper plate. Paper plate is a way to save money. You happen to have these laying around, that's one way. Um, I try not to use like the Chinette or um, anything super waxy based. Um, number one, I would like to compost it or make sure that it's going to break down sometime in the next 80 years. Um, so I tend to use something that doesn't have a waxy background. If you like the meat tray thing, a lot of people reuse the meat tray. Lids on your um, yogurt, um, that kind of stuff. We really love the, um, the Mylar sheets because they're washable. So you can totally rewash those, um, get a couple sheets. So in case you don't have time to wash it, you have it. Um, but that's a couple of money saving tips. And they're really not even time sucks. Mm -mm. You know, it's really just kind of as a matter of course. Okay, so the magic sponge is our next one. And I'm going to base this with the sponge. I wanna show you two things about this. If I go and dip in here, so instead of buying the applicator, the foam applicator, I can varnish with my sponge, I can base with my sponge, I can stain with my water-based stain with my sponge, I can do, I can antique with my sponge. We have videos on that. We're going to share that link so that you can go see more information if you want to see all the ways to do that. Watch what happens when I do this straight up, the straight color. Get off my excess right there. See how that is, it turned brown. First of all, but if I dip in water, watch what happens next. Squeezing out some of the excess. My forearms hurt. I was gardening so much this weekend, it was ridiculous. Okay, with water, notice it changes the application completely. What I love about a sponge applicator is you can make it into something completely different just by adding a little bit of water. Now I'll go back over this so it's all the same color. And what I like about having a slightly damp applicator when I'm dealing with the stains 
is it lets the paint move around. So that is an amazing reason to do this. Now, this stain is catching a couple places. So I'm gonna go back over it and even it out. Um, one thing that can happen, I'm watching this, um, this is an older, this is a couple years old. I've got this splotch right here. This board could have been laid into something laying on a counter. There could have been some, if I'm not doing this on a towel, this could have gotten um, the, um, the stain or the um, sealant on the back side of it because they laid it into something, whoever painted it. Um, so what we can do is we can do a couple things. We can keep applying to feather out the change of color. Okay, so sometimes all is not lost. If you have something happen like that, you just feather around it. I love how rich these stains are. No matter what color brown I use, I can't get regular paint to turn into a rich color. So the stains, whatever they've got is very transparent and it is like a little bit of a magic, um, magic weapon, a secret weapon. And okay. this sponge, we're talking about money saving things. As of May 30th, 2023, on our website, we offer this sponge and it's $1.59. $1.59. And you can use it and use it and use it and use it and use it. And instead of throwing this into my basin, I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna show you a couple other things we can do on this. I see the pattern kind of still coming up. I'm gonna show you some things we can do to that. Um, this is what I do all my days, is I figure out ways around things. So I'm in my water basin, and thankfully I only have one brush in there. And I'm squeezing out the sponge. This would be an argument for the middle size. Um, yeah. <laughs> like really like in there. Okay, so I'm squeezing that all out. And what I wanna do is I wanna get it squished so that the color is basically all out of it. And then I am gonna let it sit in there. And that's super gunky looking down there. It's just the brown stain because I, I did the coat on this um, cookbook stand earlier. I'm gonna seal this up um, now that we're done with that. Mallet, please. <laughs> mallet mallet scalpel <laughs> okay so then just pound that down but this is a really good argument for why the honey bottles are a really um, good idea all right so keep that there so my sponge is going to be waiting because we're going to use it again okay so now we're going to go into how else can we save money what's our next on the list next on the list is sanding block Aha. Okay, so you've watched this long enough, hopefully, and if you haven't, please go check out the videos. Sanding is how you can bring your project together when you're stenciling. So if you have a big stencily ridge around, um, if you have thicker stencils, it tends to leave a really thick ridge, and then it looks super crafty, and it doesn't look so much painterly. Um, so I really love to bring a little bit more elegance to our projects, and so if you sand, with either like a 220 or sometimes you want some distressing, so that's a 60 grit. The blocks make all the difference in the world, but they're like eight bucks or seven something or something like that. So what you can do is you can take a scrap piece of lumber and you can wrap your sanding, um, your stem, sandpaper around it. And then when you go over your project, I'll take this guy in here, and you totally have a sanding block. So you don't need to go spend money if you don't want to spend money. I do love this product. If I had a choice, I would go here if I had to, but if I had the money, I would go here. But I, this is a perfectly, perfectly good application. Okay, so I'll go there. And what's next? Next is going to be... Um, scrap wood? Scrap, let's talk about scrap wood. Okay. So scrap wood. This is another great way that you can um, save money. So scrap wood comes in a bunch of different things, okay? So this is a two by four. You know, you can paint, notice back and front. So this could say Merry Christmas on one side. It can say Bless Our Home on the other side. It can be done in a completely different color. And then this is um, smaller dimensional lumber. And then this has got um, command strips on it. So you could hang it on your wall 
and you can stand it up on your mantle. Such a great gift. So this one is wasting 50% of its, of its uh, use by only having it painted on one side, So and that also stands. So I love this kind of lumber use because you can take it from a hang it on your wall, put a loop and a thing on it, and you can take it and make it into something that you can stand on your mantle. But there's one more application for scrap. And actually, um, on the scrap thing, Carrie did um, two weeks ago, I think the garden mm -hmm. markers, the garden markers were a thing. If you want to see her cute kittens, you should go watch that video. Yes. Um, also, the garden markers are nice as well. <laughs> I mean. I know, right? The but cats. the cats are the best. Um, but she used the paint stir sticks and popsicle sticks to do garden markers, and that was a great use of a product that you have laying around that you could do. Um, Cindy asked, should you, should you sand between paint layers or just before varnishing? Um, you can do whatever you desire. Um, I tend to look for the rough areas when I very first start, and then I'll use the paper towel and I'll brush off the project. Then I'll paint. Then once, it, sometimes, and I don't know why it always happens, sometimes I get a big raised grain after I do my base coats. I, I am unclear as to why sometimes and sometimes not, um, but sometimes I do. And so if I feel it and I don't like the feel of it, I will go in with the 220 and knock it all down. I might have to do a second coat. Um, you, if you seal, sometimes you have to sand after you're sealing, sometimes after base coating. And then I always sand before I varnish over my stencil um, because I just like the feel, the look of it. It just... Yeah melds everything together. I really do like and that. And then, so along those lines, mm -hmm. Christine asked, do you sand after each project is done or is that personal preference? Preference, yeah. It just really depends. Like I said, sometimes it, sometimes this will raise the grain, sometimes it doesn't. And I, I don't know why. Yeah. You know, and like, but then on the quilt squares um, that are on the canvas, I didn't sand one bit, mm -hmm. you know, so it just, it would be, trickier on that kind of yeah. project. Well, and I also, there's, there's things about painting on canvas yeah. that that video is worthy of all by itself. Um, if you ever think you're ever gonna paint on a canvas or you have an ugly canvas laying around your house and you're like, mm -hmm. mm. like painting on stuff you don't like anymore, take that stuff out of its frame, paint on it, stick it back in its frame, <laughs> paint the frame a different color, like let's go, right? There's so much in the world we can paint on. Oh, and segue, I like it. Perfect segue. So we gathered a couple of things. When you go garage sailing or Goodwilling or whatever, you know, this is a three buck thing. Here's a little thing. I think I don't, this was a set. I think yeah, I think those The spider hands. is free. The spider is free? The spider is free. Ah. Um, I don't need that kind of drama on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so, but like a cute little trug. I mean, that would be so cute in the middle of a dining table. Paint it whatever color goes in your house. Get, I have a set of four of these. Um, do your set of four as a cute decor trend. I mean, it's just amazing. Okay, so we are back to how to base coat with this. I'm gonna show you on this piece of scrap wood. Squeeze that out. Steve, could you grab a clean bucket of water? They're right on top of that um, drying rack. I have gloves on today. These are nitrile gloves. So they're not latex. Um, they're amazing for just keeping your hands clean. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to squeeze this out in the clean water just to get the color out of it. I'm going to show you two things right now. So I squeezed all the water out of that. Then what I like to do with the sponge, it's ready to go right now, but it's a little bit damp. So I like to put it in between two pieces of paper towel and then step on it so that's foot pounds of pressure right and so now it's nice and just damp and it's not super wet so we want to go over here we can pretend like this is our project and let's go into let's go blue shaky shaky if you haven't used your paint in a while then you definitely shake because the mediums separate so if you have all of your matte medium so if it's a matte kind of paint then your matte medium will settle to the bottom and then you'll end up with a shiny paint because you'll have all of your shiny, I guess paint is intrinsically shiny 
and the matte media is what makes it actually <laughs> into a piece. Bless you. And so that's a good thing to know. Um, always shake your paint. <laughs> Excuse me, I should be done. It was the spider. <laughs> Okay, so what you can do, two things with this, is you can base coat with it just by doing solid um, color. You can also use the damp back of your sponge to wipe that back, and now you've stained your wood. Okay, so that is a really neat thing to know. Now, if you want this not to leave a mark, see how that's gonna be heavier right there? What you can do is you can mist your board. Now, this is not sealed. A sealed board is gonna do this a lot better than an unsealed board. So I'm gonna give this a little misty mist. I'm not in love with this water bottle. I need a different water bottle. So if I do this here and then I wipe it back, if I've got this misted, I can blend it straight up. Did you see how that went? So I'll go down here and then I have that misted. I'll come back and then I just wipe it and it will blend. So by misting with your water, you're gonna be able to control the application. And so something that does a little bit better than would be a better mister. So we'll go into our dirty water. I guess I wanna show you the next step. Super cool. While you're doing that, Vicki asked, where can you get pieces of scrap lumber? Um, any contractor should have scrap lumber and Honestly, you know what? I'm, I'm thinking of Charlie Corwin right now. Yeah. Um, he is a drywaller, and I know that man has got a million pieces of scrap drywall. Why couldn't you seal your drywall and then paint on that? Like the ultimate cheapest thing that you could ever find to paint on. All right, so let's talk about what else you can use a sponge for. So do you see where we're going with the sponge is, yes, it costs a whole dollar and 59 cents, but... You can use it in a million ways. You can use it to seal your project. You can use it to varnish your project. You can use it to wash uh, glaze on your project. You can use it to base coat your project. You can use it to stain your project. <sighs> you can use it to varnish your project. And that's what we're gonna do next. So um, just this one humble sponge. If you don't clean it out, then you will be paying $1.49 every time you use it. But if you keep it rinsed out, squish, 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 Squish into the, your clean, cleaner water now that I've done it a couple times. It'll stay clean. It'll stay good. You can have one million uses of this. Um, these do not deteriorate. They are incredible. I've been using them for 25 years at least. Okay, so I'm picking up some varnish, and I'm going to just wipe that on. And because I have it a little bit damp, I'm not going to get any of those pull marks, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, you won't get any of the pull marks that you get with varnish and then that will dry like a dream. And that is an amazing, amazing use. And then we use these to apply the um, wax on our projects, but you can't reuse them with anything else once you put wax in it. So we have a dedicated $1.59 for our wax, and I'm gonna leave that sitting in there. Um, but yeah, so you want to absolutely have a couple of those laying around just because you never know when you're gonna use them. Okay. Next, any questions? Um, not right this second. We did have, um, no, not this second. All right, we're gonna get into paints and how you can save money stenciling by not using so many paints. Mm. Here we go. Okay, so this gets a little technical. Number one way though is you can buy it in bulk. The two ounce bottles are phenomenal for having all the paints in the world because if I had to buy one of these so um, let's say a paint line had 300 colors and you like this stain has 200 and something colors I want them all but that's $16 each I think did we look up the price on that um, it ranges between seven and ten dollars yeah, so seven and ten depending on where you live and that's the Sherwin Williams I think you have a picture of mm -hmm. it yeah I can share it on the Facebook page later I can't yeah, share okay. pictures during the live so anyway this is Sherwin Williams the, the little sample tote okay and there's seven to ten dollars so but that is however many ounces it is so if you wanted to have all the choices and have every color then the dollar sale at the hobby store is going to be the way to get every color times 300 if you want to have some colors like this is black and white red yellow and blue that's going to be your basic color and then black and white to change the value of it the dark and lightness of it and that's what I'm going to talk to you about now. But this is a great way 
to get a bulk. These are the two colors you're going to use the most all the time. So like a cream would be another one. Think about how you paint and what your palette is. Okay. So now we'll come over here. And can you tell me those color numbers? Yes. Um, so six, nope. Yes. Six, 10, and 35. I have 27 and 28. Is that 60? It's 60. 60 on the bottom. Ah. 6, 10, 35, 27, and 28. And remembering, if we don't want them to be shiny, we're going to shake them. Um, these are definitely not colors I use all the time because I'm not always mixing from primary colors. So this is what every, these are the colors, not this exact Sure, Williams color, but this is where all color starts is with these primary colors with your lighting and darkening ability. So this is how color is made. Um, and it comes from these three parents, these three family members right here. These three parents, that is not right. Okay, so we're gonna get our palette knife. So what we can do, what you're gonna do, if you ever are watching golf with your husband and you wanna, just not be okay with it, but you want to stay there and show companionship. Mm -hmm. um, if you're ever doing that or watching Coco Melon with your grandson, ah, um, you know, it, then get your paints out and play. Like, and honestly, I think if you got your paints out and play, I bet you, I don't know about the husband, but the grandkid would come over and join you because it's way more interesting than some of the TV shows are watching today. So just saying. Okay, so if you want to play, you're just gonna take little bits of paint and you're gonna have a paper towel. And you can you can look up all the recipes for paint online. So you bring this over here and then I just sneak them into each other. So I just look here, pick a little bit of that up. And then in theory, this should start making like a purple color. Okay, so yeah, we get into a really elegant looking plum. And so maybe we, ooh, there's our purple. Maybe we pick up a little bit more blue. And now we're a darker purple. Can you see that okay, Nick? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if I'm wiping it on my paper towel, oops, that is not showing at all. Let's wipe it onto this white. So then we have a lovely purple. Okay, now if we wanted to lighten and darken it, wipe off our palette knife. If we're gonna lighten it, we just put a little bit there and then we bring it over. And now we have this lovely lilac color. Okay, and then if you want to darken it, such a scant amount of black, just tip of my brush here. My brush is my palette knife. And now I'm gonna have something a little bit more aubergine -y. And so that's gonna be my darker color, which this is not spreading very well, but you get the idea, okay? And so then if you want to go into a different direction, so on your color wheel, we really need it. Will you write that down? We need a color wheel in here so that we have one that's mm -hmm. an example all the time. But um, when you have, so time to draw. The way that your color wheel is set up is you're gonna have your blue, and I'm not sure if it's this exact way, um, but whichever, whichever order that they're in on the color wheel, in between here, you're going to have colors. There we go, thank you. Okay, and so we have our blue is over here, red is over here, our yellow is over here. So in between the blue and the yellow, you're gonna have your greens and your teals and your turquoises and things like that. In between your red, and your blue, you're going to have your purples and going into your deeper reds and things like that. And then um, I'll stop saying things like that. In between your red and your yellow, you're gonna have your orange family. And so that is what you're looking for. So you're going to mix your colors, um, whichever way you wanna do it. Um, I didn't shake very long on that yellow. Yellow is a weak color. It's an expensive pigment. So it tends to be, you can never base coat with yellow because they don't, they don't put the money in the paint bottle. And so it's difficult. You wanna use a lot of yellow and a little bit of your stronger colors. So if I was to put red in with this, then I'm going to lean to orange. Okay, if I want it orangier, I add a little bit more. 
And then you can kind of do a fun thing where you can take your dark and come up here. And I'm seeing exactly what I thought I would see. If you, black is supposed to be a sum of all the colors, um, but if you take black with yellow, you'll always end up with this amazing, like plant green. It's an amazing color. So if you're ever looking for like a, almost like army green, mix a little bit of black and yellow together and it is a rich, elegant, sophisticated color and it's one of the prettiest ones you'll ever see. But black plus, now what would you do? If I wanted to darken that, how would you darken it without making green? Um, you can do a thing called gray. So now I can mix a color that won't be so black and I can mix a little bit of that gray into my color and now I will be a lot less green and a little bit more yellow green. So if you need to darken it, that's how you can do that. And then if you want to go the other direction and go to the green green, I hope this is interesting. I Playing with colors, but. <laughs> Everyone I think is entranced. Yeah, it's, it's like a, look at how fun that is though. Like, and then you can take and mix things together from there. So like you can just play with the colors. If I took my, say my blue, so I've got blue and yellow. So say I wanna take red and I wanna go into this green. What's neat about green and red, so you know your opposites, right? Red and green are opposites. What do they use at Christmas time? They use red and green. And the reason that they use them is because they're on exact opposite sides of the color wheel. And when you have something on the exact opposite side, that is gonna be the most coordinating color. So when you have, many of you would say, I married my opposite. My best friend is opposite of me, that kind of thing. Um, I work well with Carrie because we're opposites in a lot of ways. Um, so. When you have that, that means that um, you have, I have different traits and they have different traits. And so it just, that opposite is really, it, it shines when you have it. So you'll see a lot of color combinations like that, Christmas colors, Easter colors, what do they use? They use yellow and they use lilac. And if you look, you're gonna see them on the opposite side. And so yeah. that's just a neat thing. Um, our friend over at Robin's Egg Blue Creation says, perfect tutorial for color mixing. It doesn't matter what color I try to mix, I always end up with baby poo brown. Oh no, well, okay. So when you have baby poo brown, what you have done is you have probably mixed opposite colors. Okay, so you want to, number one, sneak a color in. If I was mixing colors, um, I would have, say my yellow down here, right? And I would not mix a pile of color. I would first test my theory out. So if I wanted, um, say we wanted to take, uh, that's dry. Ding, dang, diddly. Okay, so we mix another color. So say I wanted to have a green with my yellow, which is like green with my yellow. But if I wanted to see what that's gonna look like, I would just do a little corner of it and see, and then I would be like, oh, that looks, it's a lighter shade than that. So I'd sneak in maybe some white and see what that looks like. And see, I'm kind of just mixing across that swath and then I can mix over here and I'll get lighter and lighter. But this gives me like, almost like if you're into like murder mysteries, it gives you like a DNA trail. So I started with my yellow, I snuck in some green or blue, then I got a little bit of white and then more white and it shows me what I did. So when I have to go make the recipe, I know what I did. Yeah. So it's just fun. Um, we can't obviously color cover everything, but you can get a lot of place. And let's talk about white and black as just like the main color things. If you wanted a sky blue and you know you're gonna be like blue and white, but then maybe you wanted your sky blue to be a little bit purpley. Maybe we wanted it whiter. Let's go way up here. I'm out of room. Ah, get out of the way. Okay, so we want a baby blue. And maybe we want just a little bit redder. So now we're gonna take up just a little hair on the tip of my palette knife. And we'll purple it up just a little bit. Maybe it's sunset and it's doing the thing. 
And then a lot of things will depend on, maybe you have some basic colors like, um, what's a good, okay, so maybe this is a good basic color because we use this a lot for projects. Um, but it will depend on, um, yeah, thank you. the hair dryer cord is stuck in the drawer. So if I have this, then I would be like, number one, where is this on my color wheel? Number two, what's across from it? Well, yellow is across from it or whatever. Then you could be like, what colors do I want to go with this? And then always go to Pinterest and find examples. That's Pinterest is a really good. Oh, great. And then we also have a color mixing mat here at Studio mm -hmm. R12, and it has the color wheel on it. It has the white to black gray scale, and then it has some different ideas on the back. Mm -hmm. It's laminated. It has a box for you to mix a colors, box, a gray even. box. Yeah. So I shared the link for that. So that's that you guys a really can check neat tool and it's um, wipe offable mm -hmm. so you can clean it. Yeah. And um, then we also have a video on when we released it on how to use it. And it also has some color theory in it. I love it. Okay. So if we were, where are we at with our list? Um, feel like we're doing a good job. Yeah, we are doing a good job. We only had a couple more things left on here. Um, and it is more, the, they're both about the applicators, about things that you can use ah, for yeah, applicators. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those are the only two things and we have And looking for a piece of tape. Always tape your palette down since um, palettes became unavailable, the ones that we liked. And um, there's some out there that they're terrible. Um, so we just found that the Mylar um, is great with paint. And so we decided to use that. So let's talk about applying your paint with an applicator. Okay, we were doing paper towel um, or sponge and paper towel. Yeah, and we were we wrote down that we were going to talk about what you can use that's not a dome brush. Mm -hmm. Dome brushes are our favorite, um, but there are other things that you can do. And we have a video that I'm going to share that shows it says 10, but there's actually 11 ways to paint through stencils. I think that's one of, we use fingers paper towels, um, foam applicators, mm -hmm. brushes. We use everything in that, in that you can see it all. It's amazing. If you want to know how, how to do that, then that's a way. Um, I promised you I would show you how to, um, to cover that up. First, I'm going to see if I can sand it. And so that's lightening it, okay? So the number one way that I would think of to do this would be to go ahead and just base coat it a color. Um, that is an easy way to do that. But I wanted the stain color to be the same as the stain color of the background. So I don't really want to do that. So I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna fight with this for just a second and see. Well, and with the money saving hacks, you said that the, the can of stain was $16. We have also added water to our paint mm -hmm. to make it more like a stain. Yes, yes. And the only thing about the, the stains do really good, like we did the blue here, the natural colors don't seem rich. That's the, my complaint about that is the natural colors don't do it for me. Um, but yes, for paint colors, once you mix your color, um, don't forget that you can add water to make it into a stain. Mm -hmm. Super cool. All right, so I'm going to dip into the slightly less murky water, um, and I'm going to thin some it's black. River water. It's very murky. It is like, it is, hmm. I could use that water as a stain right there. Okay, so I'm using the White Wonder brush. I'm going to use the end of my palette knife, and I'm going to smash. Don't have anything you like near yourself when you're spattering. So one thing that I can do to diffuse my little splotch problem here is I can go in and I can spatter. I'm going to use the murky water. Always tap off when you are spattering. Okay, so that's not diffusing it completely. So I can go into my white and find a spot on the other piece. That'll diffuse, yeah. 
If you tap straight up and down hanging over your surface, it will fall like snow. And um, there's a whole bunch of techniques for spattering that we show you in different videos. So make sure that you check those out. Okay, so I'm not mad about that. I think by the time I put my stencil on top of it, my leaves are gonna go over the top and it's gonna look just fine. However, now that I've done that, <laughs> I have to wait a few. <laughs> have to wait an hour. Um, and I'm not going to do this on video because you guys know how to stencil. Um, that's not gonna be our lesson, but I think showing how to make that blend is a really good lesson. Um, so I'm gonna call that because spatters take hours to dry. Um, if you're gonna spatter your project, make sure you do it when you're gonna go to lunch um, so that you have that hour to be like, mm, I'll be back. You know, uh, make sure that you don't have it laying around where anybody that touches it is going to um, make a mess out of it. Because if I ran my hand across that right now, it would just be like one of those um, those paint swirly videos that you see on, like, yeah. you know, whatever. It's like craziness. Um, that's what it would look like. So that's going to be wet for a long time. Are we having anything else on our list? Um we don't have anything else on our list, but I do have one exciting thing. I just clicked on to the back end of our YouTube, and we're only 300 away from 10,000 subscribers. That's so exciting. So, guys, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube yes. channel yet, if you are we, watching us wait, on wait, Facebook. Ready? Or... <laughs> no, um, give us a thumbs up, though, at least. Um, show some love to the algorithm. Um, we are here for you. We want to... Um, be your source of information. If you have any questions, email, send us the Facebook message, yep. um, the YouTube, um, what is it called on YouTube when they reply um, to it? Just, a just comment. comments. Yeah. Yeah. And so we go through all that stuff and we are constantly answering questions. Carrie will be like, hey, let's answer this. Yes. Well, yeah. and if you reach out to customer service and Stephanie doesn't mm -hmm. know the answer, she reaches out to me. If you reach out to me and Stephanie's the one to answer, we'll send you, we'll make sure you get to the right person. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. We do have a couple yeah, um, new questions. Fine. Patty asked, have you ever used a pre-stain wood conditioner before staining? Um, yeah, I think pre-conditioning well, pre is basically sealing your wood. Um, it, you're basically taking out the absorbing factor of your wood. So yes, a conditioner, um, whether they call it a conditioner or a sealer, um, I think they're the same thing. Um, probably there's a reason it's called a conditioner, but I've not played with them, but that's what it's doing when you seal. So good okay. question. And then okay. Marie asked, um, she had asked about painting on metal, which mm -hmm. Marie, we have a video for that. And as soon as I yeah. can find it, I will share it with you. But she said, do you have to wax on tin before you paint or chalk it? Okay, so you definitely don't want to wax on tin if you ever plan on chalking it. Okay, so as long as, so you can wax if you want the paint to chip off. Okay, so that's why you would wax on tin to do more to it. Um, if you want your tin that you've painted not to chip, you wax over it, but you'll never do anything else to that because the wax is gonna be your sealer. And then what was the previous, the tin or? Um, before you paint or chalk. Okay, yeah, so you would never, ever, ever wax. You would only wax after unless you wanted the paint to chip off. If I was painting tin, you watch that video because there's a couple of priming pieces that you do to tin to do it right and then to get it to stay forever. And then there's some sealing and some things like that as well. Yep. So and I those are just good found that, so I'm gonna share it right Yay. now. Yeah, mm -hmm. guys, painting on metal is amazing, but you definitely wanna know how to do it. Um, yeah, and the primers that we have up there, we've got the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover primers. Um, I probably are not, what tin piece did we, it was a tray that Lena did, and okay. so it's an. It was one of our one of our first. I think videos. it's galvanized, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that tray isn't going to have the primer step in it because mm -hmm. it's just using the galvanized. But um, boy, um, the primers that they make if you're going to paint a tray, change the playing field on everything. These things stick to your plastic, your everything. Like they're amazing now, products. With the door handle things, did you use a primer on that? Do you remember? Um, I used that really weird, do you remember what that thing is called? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me see if I'll share that video too. It's a short one. It's, because it was a Oh, it's in a can. Though. 
I used XO Rust. Um, this is galvanized aluminum primer. Incredible. Like weirdly, weirdly incredible. That's like hands down, whoa. Um, it did a phenomenal job. So, all right. Okay, that's I all I got. That's what we got today, guys. Um, we are so glad that you joined us. Make sure you give us a subscriber a thumbs up because 300 left to 10,000. It's been a long 10,000, but like so fast at the same time. Yeah. yeah. All right, see you guys. Day.